Hey y'all. Um, oh my goodness. That's all I can say for this week. Is, oh my goodness. We've started revival this week. And over the past week and a half, seven people have gotten saved from ages 8 to 15. And then a 16 year old surrendered his life to preach. And it's just been amazing. That's all I can say. My heart is so full. It's so, like, it's so bubbling over from last night. Our service was just amazing. So reverent and filled with praise and honor and glory to the Lord. And the services have been great. Um, last night we didn't even have a sermon we had a message but we did not have a sermon that's our preacher's theme of the church I guess you may leave without a sermon but you won't leave without a message and um, our service last night was three hours long three stinking hours long which you would you wouldn't have thought it was three minutes long it just was so into it I guess and the only thing I can really say for this week is um, there's a song I was not planning on doing this but I'm going to. I'm going to read a song. It says, Worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all the God's songs we can sing, worthy of all of the offerings we bring. You are worthy, Father, Creator, you are worthy, Savior, Sustainer, you are worthy, worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and praise, worthy of reverence, worthy of fear, worthy of love and devotion, worthy of bowing and bending of knees, worthy of all this and added to these. You are worthy. Almighty Father, Master and Lord, King of all kings and Redeemer, Wonderful Counselor, Comforter, Friend, Savior and Source of our life without end. That explains what I'm feeling. God, you are worthy of worship. You are worthy of everything I've got. You are worthy. You sent your son to die on the cross. You suffered everything. And you're worthy because it's like our preacher said once, his hand is so big that he can stop the world from spinning. He can pick up mountains and move them. But his hand is also so small, he can comfort me. He can be my best friend. He can be the person that will never leave me nor forsake me, even to the end of the world. He can be there for me, but he's also there for everybody at all at the same time. It's just so gushy, I guess, knowing that. And, um, I, don't, I really don't know if I'm, I was planning on doing an illustration. I think I'm going to, but I just had to, um, I guess, get some insurance just then to make sure this is what I was supposed to do. Um, this morning, my mom needed some gas in the car, so I went to the gas station, and while she was pumping gas, next to the gas pump was a trash can. And there was a line of ants going towards the trash can, and a line of ants coming back from the trash can. And when she got back in the car, she told me, Every time an ant would like bump out of line or bump into one another and get knocked out of line, it would go straight back into the line, right in the straight line. And it would do the same thing over and over and over again. It's like a flock of geese. You have that V line, and the tip of that V is a leader. There's always a leader. And then if one of the geese like, gets knocked out of line, I can't turn my finger that way, but like one of the geese gets out of line, it goes straight back into the line. It never like stays out of the line. That's like how we are as Christians. There's always a leader. But are we leading, are we following the wrong leader? If an ant followed a beetle, it would get stepped on. It would get hurt. It would get smushed. It would get all dead and gross. But as, as long as the ant follows the leader, as long as we as Christians follow God instead of the crowd, and we won't get stepped on, we won't get mushed, and we won't get dead and gross. So, I hope that kind of helped you like it helped me. And, um, come back next week, and I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about our revival from tonight, and then the rest of the week, and then our singing Saturday. Bye!